Hi everyone. Uh, today we'll see one more topic, which uh, they frequently ask in interviews. Okay, so there's like mandatory question. I can say that how to perform a deployment. Perform a deployment. Right. Or they may ask like. How you are performing your deployment? Can you explain the steps? Okay, there are different ways they can ask. Okay, or else I have a, a dev repository. You have done some changes. Then how you are proceeding with your uh, deployment to production? So there are many ways they can ask. Okay, so so the only way here is you know uh, this is like a frequently asked question. So let me explain how to answer this question. Okay, so. If you are working as an ETL developer, okay, so let's take some, you are working as an informatic live dev with the ETL. Okay, you are working as ETL because they have many tools. So you are working as an informatic developer. Okay, so what is your primary responsibility? So our responsibility is creation of mappings, and we create some sessions and we create a workflows. Okay, we create that. So once you have done this, what you will do? So as a developer, first you do the, this kind of stuff. So how you create this? I already explained the previous sessions. So we we get a technical specification, or we call it as a source packet mapping sheet. So based on that, we design the code. So what next? First step is done. You got some uh, mapping sheet. So based on that, you have designed the code. Code design is completed. Code design is completed. What is, what is the next step? That is called a deployment. So once you've done the development or you have done some changes to your code, okay, then you have to Test it first. Okay. Suppose let's see. I have tested in dev environment. In development environment, it's working fine. Okay. Dev. It is working fine. So what you do, how you are testing it? So we perform a testing, right? As a developer, we perform a testing. So that we call it as a unit testing. So please note this point. So this is like very important. So based on this only. So we finalize whether the candidate is, candidate is really work in the uh, project term. Okay. So once you have done the development, what you do, you perform a unit testing. Okay. So once unit testing is complete, so you you confirmed all looks good. That means no issue in my code as per the requirement is working fine. So what is the next step? You have to deploy the changes to other environment to perform a full fledged testing suppose qa testing you have so qa testing you will do you will not do it remember so qa testing so as a developer you perform only unit testing so you just confirmed it everything good so after that who will finalize this so they will have a testing team okay so again remember here this is again changing based on the project. Some some projects they may not have a testing team. So QA testing also you need to perform your end. So there are many things, but I am just saying that how to answer this. But this again changing. So all, this is fine. This is like constant. So again, going to the other environment, the testing is based on the project requirement or uh, I mean as per the project structure. Suppose let's take in my, I mean, in my project, we don't have it, testing team. So like that. So it is depending on the, it is depending on the project to, I mean, project and depend, I mean, it's very uh, between their company to company. Okay. So if you take my previous organization, yes, we have a testing team. Okay. So that is like, as for the company, it may change, or as for the project, it may change. So once you perform a unit testing, what you will do? So 
it will just move the changes to other environment. Suppose testing and not move the changes. So this concept we called one environment to other environment. You are moving the changes. This we called as a deployment. Okay, we called as a code deployment. So dev it is working fine. As a developer, you confirmed it. So you have to move the changes to production, sorry, QA, your own. Once you move the changes to <coughs> QA, then if you trigger your workflows, so testing team, they have some test cases. So they will validate, once the data is loaded as per the QA, so they will validate the data. So if your logic is working fine, the test case will mark as pass. Because as testing team, they will have some test cases as per the requirement. Suppose one test case, let's take it. Suppose let's see, there is an address field. Okay, address always not null. Okay, address always not null. That is, they have one use case for uh, for testing. So that means address should contain some values. So if you load null values to that, suppose let's see you mistakenly forget to connect this, but dev you, you have not verified properly and coming to QA, if you found that there is no value. So they will raise a defect. So it address is not populating because not null field. But anyway, uh, sorry here, but anyway, see, it's not null field absolutely to get failed if you uh, load. Okay, we'll take other scenario. Okay, address only. Okay, so let's assume like this. Address size is that 50 characters. Okay, size is 50 characters. But I mean, it's a target 50 characters. You loaded a data. You, have, you loaded a data in dev. So address also got loaded, but you have not verified perfectly some data got truncated they're expect they're expecting some data so but data got truncated in between somewhere let's see an expression okay somewhere you have mentioned less than this let's take 30 characters you have mentioned my mistake but address coming as 50 it got truncated but you have not verified just you you just checked it okay address loaded so as a developer you just done the normal basic level checking but QA, they found that address got truncated. So they will raise a defect. So just check this address is not correctly loading. Then you have to check that where it is missed. So like that, they have some test cases. Like I just give one example like this. As per the requirement, they have many test cases like that. So everything should be passed. Okay. Suppose there is a date field. So they're expecting in this format, mm, dd, y, y, y. As per... Uh, their test case, but you are loading like reverse y, 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 d, d, m. So this is also wrong, right? They will raise a defect. So, like that, they have multiple test cases for that particular mapping. Okay. So they execute that particular uh, test cases and they will give you the results. Okay. So, based on that, you have to adjust your code. Suppose let's say these two are your defects. Then you have to update the code in Dev again. Redeploy to QA. So this we called as a deployment. Deployment is nothing but moving the code from one environment to other environment that we called as a code deployment. Okay, so this is like a basic uh, uh, thing you need to know if you are going to enter use. Suppose if you don't say clearly how the deployment is happening, so fine. So by asking this question only will come to know you are really a working professional or you train somewhere. So we can finalize based on this type of questions. So last time also I told how to answer this source target mapping sheet. So this type of questions only, like we no need to take like one or two hours interview for each candidate. Okay. Like based on this one or two questions only will come to know you really worked or not. So even though you prepared very well for the other technical stuff, there is no use. If you don't say this type of questions, that's what, if you take an interview, we start with this type of questions. If we ask like this real time person like one or two, if you're not able to answer it, so then we, we, I mean, so we can finally conclude that 
is a fake kind. He, ne he never worked on that. Okay, that's what. So this type of terms, you have to understand that. So what is deployment and uh, how you are moving a code from one, one environment to other environment. So what are the things you have? So what are the steps you have it? So as I said last time, what is source target mapping sheet? So how it looks like? So last time I, I remember, so when I asked an interview, so one guy told that, so what is, I asked him, what is a source target mapping sheet or technical specification can you explain? He is saying that it is an Excel, okay? Because he, I mean, some institute he trained, he, he's seen that it is an Excel, but don't know what is inside. He's, he's, he keep on saying that it's an Excel, it's an Excel, it's an Excel. So as I said, right, source target mapping sheet, sometimes they may provide the Excel, sometimes just they give some BRD or sometimes they conclude it and this is what you have to do that some just like some brief requirement they give so there are many ways but he's not able to answer that and simply saying that I remember it's like Excel so what is there is not able to explain so you have there as a source you have a target information and what logic you have to implement so those information will have it but that is what if you are going to interview these terms will be very important what is brt what is technical specification what is deployment so i think you you, you will understand that what is meant by deployment so deployment is nothing but a moving a code from one environment to other environment we call it as a deployment so dev to qa who will do that as a developer you have to do that okay there but coming to qa and fraud that is again depend on the company some uh, some companies are having some admin teams okay uh, some companies if you if you i mean let's let's say you're like an individual contributor you don't have any team so you, there is a possibility you have to deploy the code to production also so these are the things you have so deployment so make sure that so this is what you perform so if anyone asks me to interview just explain like this i think that will be uh, fine so I think they don't go again in detail if you answer like this. But if you you are not comfortable to explain this, right? For sure they will identify you are a fake candidate or you are not worth any. So if you are really working, so you should aware of this process. Okay. So that is about the deployment, how you perform it. But remember, QA to prod again. That is QA to prod. That is again different. I mean, based on the company. So, if it is QA to production, so as I said, there will be admin teams. So, admin teams will take care of it. Sometimes, if you are like a single resource, you are handling that entire project, you may deploy QA to prod also. Suppose if you have full permissions, that is like depending on the company. So, that is like optional. If you say that, okay, I am not doing from QA to prod, yes, that is acceptable because all we, we are not giving full access to everyone so usually it's like a read only access in qa okay so uh you can directly say that okay i'm not involved in qa to their production deployment because i am not taking care of it so admin team is there so they'll take care of it. yes you can say one word answer so this is not mandated to move qa to broad as a developer so there might be other teams who will take care of it Okay, so that's all for today. We'll see you in the next session. I'll tell the question.